Welcome to Monday Morning Rant. I'm your host, Jeff Hicks, but today is a little different. It's it's special because I'm not alone. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, it is the original man with the tan and the original plan, Dion Green, and God damn it, I'm in a ranting mood tonight. Tell us, brother Dion, what are you in a ranting mood about? Mother fucking Suicide Squad. I actually went and saw it yesterday. After work, I said to myself, I said, self! You 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 want to see Suicide Squad? There's a a dumbass part of you, a, a a ridiculously human part of your soul that believes that this movie's going to be really fucking good. And you know what happened to me, Jeff? I got shit in my sandwich, and I was forced to fucking eat it. So it sounds like you didn't like this movie. You know what? <laughs> After fucking eating said shit sandwich, and 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 waiting a day to really process the atrocity. That I was forced to sit through. I didn't hate it. I just maybe it was the concept of the movie that I actually liked, but man, the movie fucking pissed me off. DC at this point is just pissing in the dark, hoping they they hit something, and I'm just um I'm, I'm I'm I have no faith, no faith whatsoever. So the listeners can hear our full in depth review of Suicide Squad on the channel, but I'm basically gonna rant with you because i've been thinking about it the last couple days and i'm with you i don't like this movie i don't hate it it's better than batman v superman but yeah it's not a good movie and it dc and when i say dc listen people i know that there are almost 40 years worth of dc films but we're talking the dc eu we're talking from man of steel on just like when you say marvel movie you're talking about iron man and the avengers franchise you're not talking about the old spider-man you're not talking about the x-men or the old daredevil you're talking about those so this is strictly the three dceu films and they haven't made a good fucking movie yet it's it's fucking ridiculous and and i feel like and i wholeheartedly agree suicide squad is not as bad as um as batman vs superman but my problem with it is they have no idea, at least with Batman and Superman, they know that they, they know that they said, hey, we're going to start off the Justice League, the Justice League journey. This is where it begins. And here you have a movie. They had no idea where they wanted to go with it. They had no fucking idea where they wanted to go with this movie. And it's so frustrating to watch because there are a lot of good people outside of Jai Courtney in this movie, but they had no fucking clue what they wanted to do. Well, see, I actually like Jai Courtney in this movie a lot. No, I like Captain Boomer. I'm just saying there's a lot of good people in the movie. I'm just saying Jai Courtney's usually not a dude that you associate with good. That's true. That's but even true. even he gives it 100%. And it's just like this just fucking, this clusterfuck. It's all over the place. Well, since you brought up the cast, who was your favorite in this film? Who do you think did the best job? Ooh, uh, what's her name? Viola Davis is Amanda Waller. That She did a fantastic job as playing her. And especially the little, uh, the end sequence. She... That was good. She she was. I was gonna say Will Smith would have been my favorite, but yeah, I'm going with with Viola Davis. She should have died. Yeah, I mean, but they but they and that's the other thing I realized. They don't know if they want to do something original. They don't know if they want to stick really close to the comic books. They don't know if they even want to stick really close to the fucking Justice League cartoon. It's like it's all over the place, man. And like and then and then, you know, as as awesome as. Um, Amanda Waller is as awesome as Will Smith is as Deadshot. They make you care about a B Batman character. It's, it's the movie's still like, it's just like what the what why why the the, mo- the laziest fucking villain ever. And then it's just like okay, well uh, hey Justice League at the end. It's like fuck you guys. I wouldn't even say it's the laziest villain ever. I'd say it's the worst comic book villain we've ever seen on screen. Oh yeah, he looked like fuck. No, no, her yeah. the Enchantress. Oh yeah, she, and then it was like, it was so dumb. It was it, that was so fucking stupid. Like, and I get it. In the comic books, Amanda Waller, you know, she plays and gets burned with a lot of fire. But for the movie to be that the plan immediately goes belly up, you know, and it's just like, oh, and, and then the fucking way that they like, okay, well, we don't want it to be super violent, so we're gonna make all the people in Metro City just turn into these literally faceless thug things and no consequence to killing them yeah that was those were some of the stupidest for as boring and generic as the chitauri were in the avengers at least they had a design they did something these were just amorphous black 
blobby headed creatures and they turned to stone when you shot them. And then they literally just shoot guns. Like this bitch apparently is super powerful when she has her heart and has her fucking brother, but they can't like at least yeah, the Chari at least had their own fucking weapons. And you had oh well we're just gonna turn them into these things and they just grab guns and they're just they just shoot guns too. It's fucking ridiculous. And I'm like, fuck you, Suicide Squad. <laughs> well, what pissed me off, dude, was the fact how generic the Enchantress looked. Like when she turned at the very end when she had that portal open and she was doing that retarded dance, the CGI was so bad. Like her head was kind of like bobbling over the CGI body and its weird motions and whoever dubbed her didn't sound right. It Oh my god, I can't think of a shittier supervillain in a film. Can you? Seriously. And, no, not only that, but but the fact that the only tie that she had to the main characters was, oh, she's dating the guy that played RoboCop. Oh, I'm just god. like, this this is the only way that you guys could write this in? This is literally... So, so, so the whole point of her being, you know, I guess a part of you know, was it uh, Team X, whatever their real designation is, the Suicide Squad, is that, oh, well, Amanda Waller has this chick's heart. And then she even stabs it, and it's like, what was the whole fucking point? Was this literally just a cuz plot reason? And I'm like, what, 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 what? this person's supposed to be super smart. She's mentally on the level with Batman, but she can't plan five feet in front of her fucking face. Give me a break with that shit. That was so fucking dumb. What did you think of uh, the music in this movie? I thought it was retarded as shit. It didn't fit. Well, I see, and that's the other thing. Is this attempt to get people to like the movie by putting in music that people like? So I like the soundtrack. I like the soundtrack. But again... Why the fuck is this in a comic book movie? Like, I get if you wanted to, to put some stuff in there, you know, but the whole soundtrack is a fucking greatest hit CD from the 70s. Like, what the fuck, guys? Like, nothing is original about the soundtrack, and it pissed me off because I'm like, oh, I like Sympathy for the Devil. But then I'm just like, oh, yeah, it's in this boring-ass comic book movie. Fuck you guys. The fucking Eminem music was the one that blew my mind. Like, why the fuck was that song of all songs? in this movie. It didn't even fit. Oh my god, it pissed me off. I and and that's and that's probably another thing that pisses me off the most is that you couldn't even hire someone. At least the the, the Avengers has like the Avengers theme. You know, at least, you know, Batman versus Superman had some type of you know, it had Hans Zimmer doing the soundtrack. But you just have a fucking uh, uh a playlist that you sent to your girlfriend a couple of years ago and you put it in the fucking movie. <laughs> Dan kept like, count during the about? whole movie he was like this is number 17 and he was just like okay so the four of us went on the sh- the four of us from the show went it was Phil, Loudy, Dan and myself and mm-hmm. no one liked it, Loudy hated it surprisingly yeah. I gave it the highest score of a 5.5 out of 10 and see the funny thing is that's why I gave it a 4.5 when we talked because of the soundtrack because especially the first trailer for Suicide Squad you know, you had that that chick's rendition of the jokes on me or whatever, and it fit perfectly. So I'm thinking they're gonna have at least some type of not fully psychedelic, but this cool like opera thing going on because it's Harley Quinn and all these bad guys who you know a lot of them have been wronged by society to be a soundtrack that fits that persona of the movie. But it's essentially fucking Ocean's Eleven with comic book characters in it. And I'm like, what what do you want to do? DC, do you want it to be dark? Do you want it to be funny? Do you want it to be kid-friendly? Do you want it to be for adults? Make up your fucking mind. And it pisses me off even more because fucking... Excuse me. Because fucking The Killing Joke just came out and essentially that movie overall was pretty damn good. Really good. And fucking Suicide Squad comes out a week later and it's just fucking... And, and I fucking knew it. When they did those goddamn reshoots, I was like, you know what? I knew that this is going to fucking dumb the movie down and make it look even fucking dumber. And sure enough, I'm like, why should I care about them? And then you expect me to just randomly believe through all the fucking Rolling Stone and Eminem hits in the fucking movie that, oh, we're really close and we're all friends now. Like, you met a fucking day ago. <laughs> That's what's so fucking dumb. And they 
first come together 24 hours before they go to fucking Metro City. And all of a sudden, I'm supposed to believe that Harley Quinn's going to turn down this bitch bringing the Joker back for because she put you put your hands on my friends. You just fucking met them. I, I can see it being Deadshot. You caring about Deadshot. But come the fuck on. Come, come the fuck on with that bullshit. You, you mentioned a boyfriend, the Joker. I thought... Jared Leto Joker was the worst Joker we've ever seen on screen. What did you think? Oh, man. (laughs) That sounds like you agree. (laughs) And you know. And there's a record of this. I was like, Jared Leto's going to do a good job. And he literally, (laughs) he literally just does a coke. Did you ever see New Jack City? Maybe like 10 years ago. But he is essentially the white guy version of fucking Nino Brown from New Jack City. And I'm like, I'm watching a fucking gangster movie right now instead of a fucking rendition of the Joker. It was so bad, I didn't even know what I was watching. Because, okay, I I hated the design, first off. The fucking tattoos and the metal teeth looked retarded. Then, I'm watching the movie, and I look over to Phil when they're in that strip club or whatever with Common, excuse mm-hmm. me, Rom Common, and I go, I hate this Joker. <laughs> And he agreed with me, and we pretty much hated every scene the Joker was in. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna, or I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you real bad. He, he was, he looked like a lesbian. And and you know what? The the design didn't bother me that much. I was like, you know what? Okay, they're going for something different. I can live with it. But the fact that he literally just plays a coked up gangster and 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 laughs every once in a while. It made me want to fucking hit him. I was like, Jared, stop fucking around and be the Joker. He, okay, you know, you've known me for goddamn almost 10 years now. You know I have not kissed Heath Ledger's ass when it comes to the Dark Knight. But man, I miss Mm. him. You know that's a lot coming from me. Uh, Exactly. You you didn't know what you had until it was gone. Yeah, not only that, but until... WB made a shitty fucking movie and was like, hey, we want to do our own thing. Hey, Jared Leto, just um, do some weird-ass rendition of that guy you did from Requiem with a Dream. And sure enough, he's just like, I'm like, stop fucking doing that. Just fucking speak. Stop making all these no... And then he's growling? What the fuck was that? Like, are you the Joker or are you just a crazy person? Because there's two different fucking things. The Joker is very distinctive crazy. And he's just fucking... This fucking gangster. I'm like, what the fuck? And then that, oh my god! And then the fucking um um memory things that they were doing, you know, and the fu- the fucking little snapshots. Oh, the flashbacks. You know, going back, flashbacks. Thank you. I don't know why I can think of that fucking word. This movie's making me fucking more and more retarded every time I talk about it. But I'm like, what the fuck? Like, not only not only do you do dumb flashbacks and waste a, a good opportunity to make the movie really cool. But you only do flashbacks for literally three members of the fucking Suicide Squad. <laughs> what the fuck? You have Killer Fucking Croc, who of, of all villains, let alone Batman villains, has a legit reason to fucking hate people. And you don't do shit with it. You don't. You don't. You don't show the. Ba- you don't show the bat beating him, which would have been cool to establish uh, how cool of a character Batman is that he can beat up a guy that fucking eats people. But you don't show that. Then you have Captain Boomerang outside of showing him getting caught. They don't show what he really wanted with that dumbass fucking vision of what's her nuts and Chana's fingering herself on screen. You don't show anything. You just show you only brought fucking Boomerang on to show the Flash. Boomerang's a funny fucking guy. Show him you know being Boomerang. Don't Captain Boomerang, don't show him just standing there drinking a beer, where where the fuck was he getting the beer from? He just had beer with his coat, and they brought it, and he's drinking hot fucking beer? That pissed me off even more. <laughs> no one likes hot beer, and fucking Guy <laughs> Courtney is looking at me in my fucking face drinking hot fucking beer. <laughs> oh my god. There you I have couldn't it. believe that yep. shit. It's like, they're like, they open their, their cases, and, you know, you know, Deadshot has his little customized assault rifle, you know, and Harley has her hammer, you know, you know the fucking this whole thing to make sure everyone knew that Killer Croc, Killer Croc was black, pissed me off. You know he's got his cool little fucking suede fucking jacket on, 
and a fucking gold muscle shirt on, you know, whatever. But fucking Captain Boomerang pull, picks up a boomerang and fucking a hot fucking beer and then, then just drinks it and he's just doing that the whole movie? Come the fuck on with that bullshit, When man. you mentioned... Um... Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. Anyway, I, back to Captain Boomerang. When he was in the bar, that was my favorite Captain Boomerang scene. When Will Smith is like, er, was awesome. Rick Flag's like, you're free to go. And he just ups and runs away. <laughs> that was one of the few moments I laughed at. Oh my god, that was funny. Plus, I liked it when he when he jumped up. I, and they showed it in the preview, I really liked it. When he jumped up and just punches the dude in the face. And they're, they're, they're like, whoa, Captain Boomerang, calm down, calm down. I, for some reason, that really made me laugh in the movie. Speaking of like laughing and humor, did you find most of the humor funny, or did you go Ugh, and cringe a little bit? Because I cringed a lot. I cringed a lot. I mean, I I laughed. Excuse me. I laughed when um, Will Smith was when he blew the kiss at Amanda Waller and stuff. But most of the majority of it, yeah, it was fucking really cringeworthy. It was like they they're like, okay, we need a joke here, and they put the, a random joke in. And then, like, the whole scene where Harley Quinn steals the purse. Mm-hmm. And that was such a shitty line and a shitty joke. I, I don't think... And, and it was a, it was like a half-full theater. No one fucking laughed, dude. No one laughed at that. Dude, when we went to the theater... We went to the first screening. There, It was maybe a quarter full. Very little reactions to anything besides when Will Smith was hamming it up. And the joke... Here's the thing. I like Margot Robbie. I think she's a hot woman. I think she did a good job for the most part. But the scene where she goes, what's your color or perfume, the stench of death? I rolled my eyes so hard. I looked at film like, what the fuck? That was the dumbest joke in that entire film. That was bad. It's like, it would have been just, just mention something funny. Like, just say, like, mention a real perfume. That would have been way funnier than, is that the stench of death? Bitch, you don't know what the fucking stench of death even is. <laughs> But I will say, Ike Barinholtz, he was he was really funny in the movie. I really did like him. He was he. Oh man, he might be the best. Yeah, he, yeah. I think he might be my favorite my favorite part of that whole movie because he was he was really funny in that movie, especially when he's just like he's talking to Harley Quinn, and he's just like, "Woo, that's a whole lot of crazy and one hot lady." I'm just like, "Ah, Mad TV. I miss <laughs> Mad TV." I do too. I hope that he, if there's a sequel, I hope that he. I hope he's in the Justice League. I want Ike Barinholtz to be. In more movies, just in general, he's a fucking funny dude, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I mean, I'm, I'm kind of hoping he's in in um in like he somehow gets up to work on the Watchtower for the Justice League. That would be pretty goddamn funny. But I mean, he especially when he's wearing that fucking silk tiger shirt at the casino. I was like, what the fuck does this dude do with his spare time? Oh yeah, he loses money and randomly is just in butcher shops with black dudes cutting meat in the background. Yeah, that part was funny. I just started laughing. I'm like, I know they're trying to intimidate him, but god damn, this is... I don't know. And then the Joker comes in. I thought the Joker was going to, like, suck his dick or something. Yeah, yeah, man. It was Baby like... They... A cum shot. <laughs> he just does the whole kiss the ring thing. I'm just like, okay, is he a crazy person or is he the fucking Joker? Like, it's just so... So fucking weird, dude. So, I don't... Oh, piss me off. It, it, so many good things that could have... This movie could have been really fucking cool. This it, movie could have been really fucking cool. And they just <laughs> threw it together. And I fucking knew it. The minute I heard about reshots, I was like, they probably made the movie even fucking dumber. And sure enough! See, I wasn't too, too upset about the reshoots, because... Whatever. I was upset about this movie from the time I saw the first trailer, the Bohemian Rhapsody one, because I thought to myself, uh-oh, Jeff, they're trying to replicate Guardians of the Galaxy, and yep. they're not going to do it because Guardians of the Galaxy was fucking lightning in a bottle. You know, they'll never replicate that, and they didn't. They didn't. Not only that, but it's not the fact that they didn't. They missed so wildly. I get if you try and it's still a good movie, but it's not Guardians of the Galaxy. Or for that matter, you know, it's not, it's even not like the A-Team or something. I get that. But the fact that they missed so wildly with such good characters fucking amazes me. It amazes me. I mean, again, fucking, you only show flashbacks for half the fucking Suicide Squad. 
Like, how the fuck do you make a movie and you... Okay, this is our plan. We're only, we're only going to do it for, for, for Deadshot, for Harley Quinn, and for Diablo. They should have done that for Slipknot because he was the most important member of the squad. I know, then they fucking kill him in the beginning? What the <laughs> fuck? Who okay? Who was your favorite squad member that wasn't Will Smith or Harley Quinn? Um, oh, Captain Boomerang for sure. Captain Boomerang for sure. He was he was he was funny in that movie. I mean, I, like Jai Courtney's like a broken clock's right twice a day. Goddamn it! This is gonna be my one time to get a fucking movie role right, and he did. I'll give him all the credit in the world. This is the first time I've actively or excuse me, actually liked Jai Courtney. Normally, he's either just there in a movie. Like, in Terminator Salvation, I didn't hate him. No, sorry, Genesis, he was just there. But mm-hmm. fuck, I hated him as Jack McClain. That was the worst... Obviously, that's the worst Die Hard movie. That's one of the worst action movies ever made. And he oh, is just sure. garbage. But my favorite was El Diablo, because he was the only character that had a fucking arc that wasn't Will Smith or Harley Quinn. I could see that. I mean, and and I did I did like how he was... You know, they, they waited until you know, near the end of the movie to show, you know, why he get, turned himself in. And that, and that was cool how, like, they were all crying and stuff. And, it, and, and and his character made Harley Quinn even more human when she's like, yo, own that shit. Own that shit. You know, we don't... What do you think was going to happen? People like us don't get that stuff. And I was like, I thought that, that was a really, really cool part. And even to see Jai Courtney actually portray an emotion besides amazement when he's crying, and she, I was like, God damn, like... Like I said, a broken clock, and, and this movie that was a really good scene when they're reacting to his to his story. I'm just like, okay, see, and it pissed me off even more because you could have done more shit like that for the whole fucking movie. <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned Killer Croc a moment ago. I hate to pull this kind of card, but he was that was a little racist the way they portrayed him. I never, like you I, know, I yeah, never dude. say that shit. I know, and 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 you and you, uh, and definitely when we have conversations, but for you to admit that they made they made they went out of their way to say, "Hey, Killer Croc's a black guy," and I'm just like, "God, fucking!" And he fucking says, "Shorty," that pissed me the fuck. I'm like, "What the fuck? What the fuck?" He said, "Nah, Shorty, I'm be-. I'm like, "What the fuck, you Killer Croc? You're a fucking dude who eats people." And at this point, I want to beat you up so fucking bad right now. It's making my dick hard. The part that, the part that pissed me off is when they're all talking about the stuff they want, and he goes, B-E-T. Oh Seriously? Of all fucking bu- things to want, B-E-T. That was bullshit. That was fucking bullshit. And the fact that they fucking, fucking David Ayer ate that shit, I was like, fuck you, dude. Fuck you, B-E-T. That's, that's the amount, that's the level of the comedy in this movie, is... We're going to go with the goddamn hammer fist and hilarity here. And Killer Croc wants BET, y'all. His last name's Jones. Ha <laughs> ha, FUBU. Like, fuck you guys. <laughs> I wish I was in the theater with you to watch this because I had so many what the fuck moments. Um, yeah, you know, too, too many to even recall. Mostly were around the Joker being shitty. The story was not there. The vill- okay, look at the ending felt like Ghostbusters meets the Avengers, and it wasn't yeah. good. It was it was a shit sandwich, dude. And the fact, again, the fact that th- there was so much potential for this, this could have been the thing that literally saved the DC movie universe, because fucking it could have been so. But it, again, it's just a fucking it's like a filler episode in a TV show. And at the end of the day, the thing that pisses me off is the Suicide Squad didn't really fucking do it. Like, they don't explain why none of the other heroes come to fucking Metro City. They don't really explain, like, oh, she, oh, another thing. Fucking, oh, I'm going to make this machine. Like, was that spelled the machine just trash in the air shooting lightning bolts across the sky? Like, you could have done something really fucking cool. And the fact that they, they copied the Destroyer armor for her brother, piss me the fuck off. I said the exact same thing. I was like, hey, look, Thor's going to be here any second. Yeah. And that no one laughed. Off, dude. Good, because they deserve to fucking suffer for going to see that movie. So I'm going to ask you the manliest question of all time. Mm-hmm. How hot was Margot Robbie? 
man, when that, I will admit the scene where she's like spinning in her in her cell, I was like, I did get a boner. I was like, okay, okay, Margot, you did your you did your job. I I, I want to bang you. And it was funny when she puts on her shit and everyone's just staring at her. She's like, what? I I did I did I did I went. <laughs> it was pretty funny. The part that, that the got me talked about popping a boner when she was dancing in that nightclub to Super Freak in the beginning. I was oh like, yeah. Yes. Yes. And then yeah. and then Common was there and I was just like, no, no, because Joker is now a voyeur and wants to watch dudes fuck Harley Quinn. That that was weird for me. Like, I never thought of the Joker as a sexual being. But right. now that he's into some weird, I bet he likes pegging too. He's probably into butt stuff. Well, and that's the thing that kind of pissed me off. It's like the Joker, they establish that he kills Robin, right? So that they do one of the reasons, obviously, for everyone that doesn't read a lot of comic books out there, it establishes that Joker will do anything to anyone at any time. And even in the comic books, they repeatedly show that he abuses Harley Quinn. But to make him give in to these regular people emotions of jealousy like the dude's like oh you got a good looking bitch like he the, the dude called her a bitch and that's why he's gonna kill her and then he's in actually in love with her like what the fuck i'm like why why is this a romantic comedy why is this this is the joker that we're gonna put in the justice league is this emotionally distraught boyfriend yeah and he's supposed to be batman's biggest villain you know the one that yeah. batman can't cope with the one he won't kill but the one he you know what i'm saying like it's supposed right. to be v1 and if that's the zenith of the batman rogues gallery that we're gonna see on film i'm afraid to see what the nader is because there Seriously. is every that to me is like the joker is like a two out of ten one it's the joker so he gets a point and you know fuck he's just one he's just because the joker exists it's a one out of ten everything else is garbage um Killer Croc well, was retarded. I mean, yeah. who's going to be the Batman villain in this universe? The Riddler? That'd be cool. I like the Riddler. Ra's al Ghul ain't coming back anytime soon. Right. Where can they go? Well, and that's, and that's the thing that pisses me off, right? Is And I think that you, and I know I say this a lot when we talk about it, but that's another huge problem with DC right now is that these characters, their, vil their villains played specific roles, right? So the Joker showed that, hey, one bad thing can happen to Batman and he can be just like the Joker. This is the one guy that, 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 that Batman can't get to, that he can't reach, that he can't bring himself to, 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 to kill, to, to meet with on the battlefield. Joker is his antithesis. So for you to, to one, make the Batman, make a movie with the Joker, even if you can't even decide if that's what you want the movie to be about, and Batman has... No fucking interaction with him whatsoever. It's, it's weird. So when they do the next Batman movie, when he takes the Joker down, there's nothing in it for us to really care about. We don't care about their relationship at all. Because at this point, the Joker cares more about Harley than he cares about Batman, which is not what the character was. Even, even more so. You know, we were talking about why Man of Steel is shitty because he fucking kills Zod. And, I, and like I said, I could get if that was the theme that you were going for and you went with it. But the thing I liked about Superman, Superman's villain, you know, his antithesis was, was essentially Darkseid. Darkseid was the one guy that he wanted to fucking kill. So when Darkseid, you know, attacks the Earth and Darkseid, you know, kills his friends, Darkseid's the one dude that Superman will fight as hard as he can because Superman feels like he's living in a box, in a cardboard box. He can't do anything. To, 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 <laughs> was that a song the, reference? A what? There's a song that goes, I'm a living in a box. I'm a living in a cardboard box. I thought you no, were referencing a... that song. <laughs> no, I was referencing Justice. That was the episode of the Justice League cartoon. I know what he talks about. I live in a world of whatever, and I'm really going to yeah. lay into you. I, yeah. I got that. I thought you were referencing that song. I was like, Dion, that was on point, dude. <laughs> high five. <laughs> I think that was, you deserve, that was accidental, but... I think no, you no. two high fives for, you know, accidental awesomeness. Hell yeah, that's fantastic. That's the bullshitter's <laughs> way, baby. <laughs> well, that's why we are world-class bullshitters and not, that's you know, exactly like uh, D-grade Taco Bell beef bullshitters. You know, we're, exactly. we're, we're quality. 
Yeah, we're high class shit. We're the we're the meat that you sell at a really fancy French restaurant and don't tell your girlfriend it costs a, a shit ton. <laughs> Well, if you take her there, you will get laid. So, um, yep. listeners, if you play this episode for a girl, you might get laid if you're a pimp. Because, being honest, I don't think this show can help you get laid. Probably not. But then, hopefully, your your woman will be like, man, you listen to some, some interesting shit. They say some crazy shit, blah, 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 blah. And then, boom, she's, she's, she's wet as a washcloth, man. You go and get that. I gotta say, we've since we've expanded, we've had our you know quadruple expansion in that two week period. We have a lot of female listeners that comment on every video, so I'm surprised. Remember, we were used to be like 97 percent male audience listeners. Yeah, man. And, yeah, right, we're probably about 80 now, but still, that's a big jump. That's good, man. Especially because it's like you know we we keep it real here at World Class Bullshitters. This isn't this isn't the Today Show where we got some. Ugly motherfuckers on TV every goddamn day. We got some hard hitting goddamn opinions. You One see, being that, hey, Suicide Squad sucks dick. So you're telling me Al Roker will never be on this show? I, if, if he if he actually comes in and he does the whole Dave Chappelle kiss the rings, bitch, I'll let him on. <laughs> but other than that, I'm like, yo, brother, this is my show. These are these are these are, this is my thing. You got to stick to the Today Show. Uh, okay, then you're speaking my language. Uh, you know. I hate to keep beating the dead horse, but I will because it's funny. That fucking Joker pissed me off. But I want to bring up one other character that I thought was completely useless, and that was Rick Flag. What the fuck? He was garbage. I'm sorry if you listeners out there are Joel Kinnaman fans. That's fine. I'm not attacking you personally. But what the fuck was that guy doing? He was he was he had an accent. He didn't have an accent. He was controlled by his dick. He was controlled by his duty. Like he didn't even have a fucking he wasn't even a character. He was just like an idea wrapped in some fucking military garb with a shitty goatee and like a Walmart loyalty card. He was the dumbest character in that whole fucking movie. Because plot, Jeff. That's literally why he was there. We need a reason for the heroes, quote unquote, to not like the villain and want to save the day. And that was it. And it was so shittily done. You know, and like you said, like they, he couldn't even keep his fucking accent and even then he couldn't even really keep the whole country accent let alone decide if he was going to keep his real accent that whole you know urban white dude thing that he the way that he speaks in other movies mm -hmm. you know he, he he kept doing that too and i'm like this is this is even worse than mila kunis in max Payne, where she started off with a russian accent and then just gives up a quarter into the movie <laughs> like, it was worse than that she is not a good actress at all i hate to shit she, on her but she's not no, she's really good looking, but yeah, she's not she's not good at what she oh, does. Oh, she's a beautiful <laughs> woman. I'm never going to deny that. But when it comes to her acting, the only thing she's convincing in is those Jim, uh, Jim Beam commercials. <laughs> Jim Beam and Apple. Jim Beam and blah 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 and oak-soaked barrels. I'm like, okay, Mila Kunis, I believe you're an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> this, this barrel has my name on it. Yeah, because they paid you $10,000 to do this fucking commercial. Mila, calm down. Shh. I find it hilarious that she's fucking Kelso in real life. I that actually makes me mad. Because I can't really put my finger on it, but I'm just like Ashton Kutcher, who's been half-assing his way through life for the for ever since we were kids. <laughs> fucking literally, literally lucks up and gets to fuck Mila Kunis because they did a show together. I was like, oh, Ashton, I hate you, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> Well, let's close. You, you saw the killers, man, and it's like that guy's with Mila Kunis. That guy's with Mila Kunis. Look, it. I saw Killers with Joel, and that's top five worst cinematic experiences I've ever had in my entire life. So, Joel, if you ever listen to this episode, I love you, man. You're one of my closest friends. But fuck you. That was garbage. <laughs> you picked the movie. You didn't even apologize to me, motherfucker. It's been five <laughs> years. I've been living with that fucking shame that I had to go experience that garbage. So next time you talk to me, be it on Facebook or S Skype or Twitter or MySpace, just apologize for killers, man. That's all I want to hear. Our friendship is just as strong as it ever has been, but I want an apology because you owe it to me, goddammit. Yeah, any t anytime you have to see the hairy butt snatch of comedy, Ashton Kutcher, that's a, that's a bad afternoon, dude. The part that pisses me off is Katherine Heigl's bitchy face. I think I think Katherine Heigl's bitchy face pisses everyone off at all times. Anytime she does anything, I don't like her. She's the most unlikable actress in America. 
Well, yeah, she. Like, I, I know literally she is. Like that's the reason why she can't get any work because she's just so unlikable. You know, she'll cash your check but talk shit about you afterwards. I have no sympathy for her. You know, nope. Uh, nope. There's a reason people don't like to work with her, and she's a fucking diva. She's not even good. I could understand if, like, I don't know. Let's say Jeremy Irons had a bad day, and he was kind of an asshole on like one movie. But it's Jeremy fucking Irons. That's like Oscar caliber, you know, fucking mm-hmm, A-list mm-hmm. first first class actor right there. Catherine Heigl's like a Catherine Heigl's like three steps above Kathy Griffin. Not good. She's mildly <laughs> she's attractive, but that's all she's got going for. Her. Watch Knocked right. Up. She ruins a great premise with being a straight up twat. Put her. Put anyone else. You know what? If you would have put somebody like Drew Barrymore and Knocked Up, that could have been a really awesome movie. Because Knocked Up is like 60% of a good movie and 40% of bullshit. That's what the problem with all the Judd Apatow movies are. They start out awesome. You get this great plot, this great premise. It's funny as fuck. You've never seen anything like it. And then it gets real. And it doesn't doesn't set well with me. Like, I didn't... Well, not only that, but it's like they, you know... One, it's bad because Drew Barryman was too busy doing shitty Adam Sandler movies. And then two, you know, Catherine Heigl isn't funny. She's not funny at all. You know, even when, you know, even in those rom-coms that she's in, <laughs> com being the relative term here, you know, she's fucking not funny at all. She has no charisma outside of, even 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 then, that fucking um, Grey's Anatomy bullshit wasn't that good. She's just, unlike, even when she acts, you're just like, you know, I... You do nothing for me, bitch. <laughs> Look, you know my thoughts on Judd Apatow movies, and you know that after we saw This Is 40 in theaters, that I'll never give another one another chance. I'm done. Like, I'm fucking done with Judd Apatow. There is nothing he can do that makes me give a fuck anymore. No, seriously, that's... I mean, fuck that dude for real. Fuck that dude for real. So, let's close this out with a serious question. How is this going to affect the DCEU? What do you think Warner Brothers is going to be nervous? Okay, it looks like this movie is going to make a lot of money its opening weekend, which is fine. It wasn't it doesn't deserve to flop, but it wasn't great. The only reason I would want it to not make a ton of money is so Warner Brothers gets the message and gets their shit together because I love DC characters. Yeah, I'm a Marvel fan first, but I like Batman, I like Superman. Uh Green Lantern's cool, The Flash is all right. I don't really care about Wonder Woman, but, but you know, it's because I don't have a problem with Wonder Woman. I have a problem with the people that create Wonder Woman. They're trying to make her into a an icon when realistically she's just a fucking comic book character. Well, so, not only that, but you know, she, I, I get where you're going with that, and I agree. But but I think it won't. This this will do what Batman vs Superman did. It'll 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 show them that okay, hey, we need to change some things, but it won't make them do anything drastic. Right, so it won't. They're not going to get rid of Zack Snyder, even though I hope that the news that um, Zack Snyder did a scene in the movie really, really fucks them over. But it's, I don't think it's going to do anything, man. They're, they're going to see. They're going to see the money and they're going to be like, you know what? We'll make some changes and then we'll. Uh, I think we're doing the right thing here. And fucking Suicide Squad is not going to do a goddamn thing, man. Not a goddamn thing. I I think that okay. The only way we're going to get big change out of the DCEU is if... Okay, I'm sorry I keep saying okay, but I'm drinking. Wonder Woman is going to get praised no matter what. I've said this on three separate videos this week, and I stand by it 100%. You know how I feel about this bullshit political agenda in Hollywood, and you know how Hollywood likes to push that agenda. Wonder Woman is going to get praised for being the first female-led superhero movie. Like I said, it could be Gal Gadot taking a dump for two hours, and people are going to praise it no matter what because it's the first female superhero film. It's directed by a female, and they want that narrative. They want it to go down in history as being this huge success. So critics are going to fucking praise it. Uh, People are going to go see it. But if Justice League is not Avengers-level successful, and it could be, I'm talking Age of Ultron. doesn't even have to be first Avengers. But here's the thing. Avengers 1 made 1.5 bill. Avengers 2 made 1.4 billion. I don't think that's a huge drop off in qual era uh, financial uh, money. Do you? Oh no, a half a half a billion dollars? No, no, no. No, a uh, hundred million dollars was the difference, dude. One tenth of a billion. Oh dollars. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh fuck yeah, that's not that's not bad. We're talking that's point, not even point bill. You know, 
a hundred million dollars is a lot of money, but when you're talking point that point bill twill, hmm, hmm, as Will Sasso would say, hmm, point point bill twill. <laughs> I love that, dude. No, but the thing is, I think if Justice League is a piece of shit dumpster fire, then we'll get some change. But I think we're going to pretty much... Justice League, or Suicide Squad's going to make enough to where Kevin Fujiyama, or whatever his name is, is going to be like, all right, well, this was successful enough. Let's keep forward with everything. And Wonder Woman's going to get praise, and then we're going to get Justice League, and I'm honestly thinking it's going to suck dickhole because we got Zack Snyder back on it. And yeah, there's going to be... Okay, I feel like there's too much studio interference with the DC movies. Yep. But yep. Um, on behalf of Zack Snyder, somebody needs to rein that motherfucker in because he's like a 13 year old with ADD and a huge erection. Like that, he he's listen, straight. listen, and 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 I, I, don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but you know, obviously because I'm drinking. But the other thing is he he's not even that good, and this is what Suicide Squad proved to me. This is what Ghostbusters proved to me. I don't think. Wonder Woman's going to be any good. And not only is it not going to be good, I think it's going to, the critics will come out, the movie will release, and it's not going to be a good movie. And they're going to do the exact same thing, and fucking listen to me when I say this, America. They're going to do the exact same thing that they did when bus, when, bus drivers, Ghostbusters came out. <laughs> that, Bustin does that, make you feel good. <laughs> they're going to, that movie's going to bust out. <laughs> it's going to bust out fucking... They're gonna Gal Gadot's gonna take a bunch of pictures with high schoolers in fucking Vermont or some dumb shit. The movie's gonna come out and they're gonna stop fucking talking about it because they they realize the same shit that they realize with Ghostbusters, doing it for the sake of putting a woman in a movie and not caring about the quality of the fucking film is bad. Because we saw how far and how fast it dropped when Star Trek came out. After that shit, no one fucking cared. Okay, and and that's gonna happen. I think. They're gonna do all this press for 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 Wonder Woman. It's gonna come out, and it's gonna it's not gonna be a good movie. It's literally just gonna be World War a World War One biography with Gal Gadot running around in a weird ass costume. I think and and, be, and right. I think finally that's gonna be the movie that gets Zack Snyder kicked off the project. I think they're gonna be so focused on this whole female empowerment kick that they're not gonna tell a strong story, and I think that's a problem because that goes against what they're fighting for. If you people that make these movies were trying to show. I'm going to use this example because I always do. Princess Leia is the perfect example of equality in a film. She is a equally capable of all the other dudes in Star Wars, but she has her limits and flaws. Like I keep saying, she's a great shot. She's a better shot than Luke Skywalker. She can handle her shit against Stormtroopers. But you know what she can't do? She can't fly a ship. She needs Han Solo for that. You know what she can't do? She can't use a lightsaber. That's where Luke comes in. My point is, wh when you make a good story that and the character just happens to be a woman... And she's a great character. Exactly. That's you have a strong female character. They don't draw exactly. the that she's a girl. Like, the only time she's ultra feminine is in Return of the Jedi when she gets captured. But guess what she does? She kills the bad guy that could that captured Han Solo. So With her know, bare fucking hands, too. Yeah, Princess Leia's a badass bitch. I don't care what anyone says. You can praise Laura Croft. You can praise the girl from Blood Rain or Underworld or any of those movies. Alice from fucking Resident Evil. No, Princess Leia is the only legitimate badass female character in a movie that isn't uh is that they don't draw on the fact that she's a woman like she doesn't fight anyone with her bare hands and do all these dumb flips and kicks she just shoots a motherfucker straight up like hey there she is stunner no boom you're dead don't fuck with me like that is right. a bad chick yep 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 and and that's what's gonna happen with the justice like they're you know and they did an okay job. I mean, she was probably one of the only, like, decent parts of Batman versus Superman because it was just like, hey, this bitch just happens to be Wonder Woman. You know, but then I think that, you know, they're going to dial up the whole man-hating thing that was in the comic books for a long time, right? Where it's going to be, you know, she's like, ha, men. You know, she did the, she did the same thing in, in the comic, in the, uh, in the Justice League cartoon, and they're going to crank that shit up to a thousand in this movie. It's going to be like, oh, and, and the bad thing is, I'm telling it, calling it right now. They're going to undo all that bullshit when they make Chris Pine the one man that she grows to trust and love and becomes this fucking sobby mess. And they're going to fucking undo all this good shit that they were doing with the character. I would I'm be, calling it right now. I would be impressed if the whole movie, they don't make a comment about how bad, how bad men are and all this other shit. They just kind of tell a movie about a cool character and 
talk about how bad war is and shit. You know, no, they won't. It'll just be about how evil men are, how dumb they are. And if you don't, and if you're a guy that doesn't enjoy this movie because you're being shit on, you're a sexist. They can say the most sexist shit to you for hours on end, but if you don't take it with a fucking smile, you're the asshole. So you know what, Hollywood and DC, I hope you eventually get this message. And if you don't, fuck off. You know, it's it's stupid. I don't think that the people that bitch about these movies don't go see them. And the guys like us that bitch about the fucking narrative don't treat women like shit. I don't think, right. like, we've never laid a hand on a woman. You're a happily married dude. You, I know what kind of guy you are. You know what? We're voicing our displeasure about a fucking fictional character. If you try to label us as a sexist, you're a fucking idiot. You don't even know how to interact with people on a real life basis. I know. And that's what, um, that's what, that's what pisses me off. It's like, you know, if, if it's a bad movie, it gets a pass because, hey, we've got a bunch of chicks in it. You know, or hey, we're trying to make a make a black character. That's why this bad movie's getting a pass. And it's like, hey guys, the movie fucking sucks, and no one cares about that. No one cares about that shit. You know, and 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 that's what I think did Suicide Squad in. Is it a Suicide Squad movie? Is it a Joker movie? Why? You know, they're gonna change the Joker to be this fucking character on Dawson's Creek, <laughs> and it fucking and the movie fucking suffered for it, dude. And they're not gonna learn about it until you know we, until a movie like that fucking flops and i cannot wait until you have whether it be sony or the wb or any other character or any other company makes this huge movie and it fucking flops and i hope they lose hundreds of millions of fucking dollars and they finally learn hey we're in the movie making business if we want to change something we're just gonna make a good fucking movie and i cannot wait i can't wait for that day to happen man well, those are strong words, and we're going to close it out on that. All I want to say is that 2016 has not been a strong year for DC. You had Batman v Superman come out, and that was not good. It was just okay. Like, I'm going to be generous with these movies because I'm a fan of comic books. I read, I read, I read both of the big two. I read all kinds. I read independent. I read small press. I read foreign. I read all kinds of comics. Okay, I love, I love the art of comic books. Okay, I'm willing to give certain a little bit of leeway here and there but batman v superman was a five out of ten movie man it was not great killing joke came out pissed me off i gave it a seven out of ten that's me being lenient and then suicide squad came out it's a 5.5 look those people those actors the thing i feel bad about is the movie is not good but every single actor in that movie felt like they were trying their ass working their asses off okay I felt like, yep. um, what's her face, Margot Robbie, I felt like she was really fucking trying. And I almost feel sad watching her because she's trying so hard and she's in a piece of shit. The only person that I don't have any sympathy for is Jared Leto and maybe Joel Kinnaman because they both fucking sucked, asshole. Yeah, yeah. And 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 that's the thing that pisses and, and And you hear it now that they're saying that, and this is my last thing on Suicide Squad, now that they're saying that Jared Leto's mad that they took more Joker out. Now we know why, asshole. Now we know why. So fuck you. Fuck WB for wasting my goddamn time. You owe me fucking $8 because I went to a really nice movie theater where they sell beer, and I'm fucking pissed that I wasted a good beer in that piece of shit fucking movie. And most of all, Zack Snyder, and I, and I really hope that you that you hear this one day, even if it's after all these movies come out and, and you finally have been forced to go live on the, Cy- the island of Cyprus, fuck you. Fuck you, dude. If I ever see you in fucking public, I'm going to look you in your eye. I'm going to get really uncomfortably close to you, and I'm going to say, hey, Zack Snyder. Hey, Zack Snyder. Hey, Zack, Zack. Fuck you, dude. Fuck you. Hey folks, Jeff of World Class Bullshitters here. Just wanted to let you know about Incarnate Studios. You haven't heard of them? Well, they help sponsor the show and keep us afloat. They make really great t-shirts, like Shitbusters, which is the official protest shirt of the 2016 farce. They also got Donald Trump, blow hard, and Hillary Clinton, blow hard too, blow harder. Poo and politics not your thing? They got shirts from video games, TV shows, movies, horror, and the best part is, they add new shirts twice a week. So keep checking back to see what's coming next. Incarnate Studios.com and don't forget the hyphen.